It's an area with a long-standing reputation for violence and gang activity. You know what you did? And people know who did it? Police say they were caught in the crossfire of the Galloway Boys gang, fighting to protect their turf. In today's video, we'll be talking about one of Toronto's most feared street gangs, the Galloway Boys. The Galloway Boys were formed four decades ago, back in the 1980s. They were originally a group of friends who got together to sell drugs. They are also known as the Giway Boys and hail from the Galloway region of Scarborough, Toronto. The gang ravaged the streets of Toronto in the early 2000s and has been notorious for being one of the most violent street gangs in the region. In this video, we'll tell you the story of the Galloway Boys, how they've been involved in some of the biggest shootings, legal controversies, and the major police operations that were carried out to deter gang violence in Toronto. According to the authorities, during the early 2000s, the Galloway Boys routinely confronted the Orton Park Gang. The police believed that both of these groups were trying to seize control of the drug trade in the region. In 2002, the then leader of the Galloway Boys, Norris Allen, was shot dead while sitting in his car. In the wake of his death, the gang was missing a leader. That's when Tyshawn Riley decided to step up and took over the gang. Under his command, the gang became highly organized and had their fingers in a wide variety of crimes including drugs, prostitution, arms trade, and more. Riley was already running the gang well and expanding their reach when they got another lucky boost in 2003. The Galloway boys managed to steal a cache of guns which helped them overpower other gangs in the region. As such, there was a struggle for power on the streets of Toronto, which led to many fights between the Galloway boys and rival gangs. However, their fighting for power escalated into violent shootings and the gang gained notoriety for being a violent organization. The Galloway boys were already drawing attention due to their firepower, when in 2004, they suffered a major blow to their operations, which made them a major focus of the police. Their leader Riley made the gravest mistake, which later turned out to be a case of mistaken identity. On March 3rd, 2004, Charlton and Bell were driving down the Malvern intersection. Charlton was a concession stand worker at the then Skydome, and Bell was a self-employed renovator. They stopped at a red light when they were noticed by Riley. He mistook them as being members of the rival Malvern crew and opened fire on their car. The barrage of bullets ended up taking the life of Charlton and severely injured Bell. Neither of the two victims had any gang connections. At the time of the shooting, Riley was allegedly accompanied by two other members of the gang. His accomplices were Philip Atkins and Jason Wisdom, both of whom were members of the Galloway Boys. Additionally, Philip and Jason were reportedly part of the gang's assassination squad, called the Throwbacks. This squad used to carry out hits against the gang's rivals. The fact that Charlton and Bell were present at the Malvern intersection caused them to think that they might be associated with the Malvern group. But because the two victims were innocent and didn't have any connection with either gang, the hit caused a massive outrage and put the Galloway boys under police surveillance. All three suspects, Riley, Philip, and Jason, were put in jail. In 2009, during their trial, the jury found Riley guilty of the first degree murder of Brenton Charlton and the attempted murder of Leonard Bell. He was given a life sentence. The trial was one of the most expensive trials in the city's history, with the budget being millions of dollars. Most of this money was spent on law enforcers patrolling up and down the courtroom. Furthermore, in 2011, when Riley was already serving a life sentence, he was convicted of two more attempted murders. He was found guilty of shooting Coffee Patron and Chris Hyatt, and was sentenced to another 18 years in prison. According to the police, Riley shot Patron and Hyatt as a revenge for the death of his mentor, Norris Allen. He refused to apologize to his victims or show any remorse. During the 2011 trial, Detective Banks of the Toronto Police Department said, he is to me the purest form of human evil. He is a man that had no regard whatsoever for human life. Detective Banks even claimed that Riley was playing God, stating, This is part of the gang atmosphere, his disregard for the Malvern people, his disregard for human life, and you were expendable if you lived up there. He basically was playing God. Riley's arrest created a power vacuum, and younger members of the gang started piling up to fill it. This stirred up things in Toronto's underworld and led to violence, shootings, and death of innocents. The Galloway boys were already on the police's radar after Riley's shootings, but this new struggle for power within the organization led to even more arrests. While the police were already cracking down against gang violence, the Galloway boys became the centerpiece of another incident. 
and 2011, the Galloway boys shot and killed Dimitri Barnaby. It was a tragic case where Galloway boys once again mistook an innocent man for their intended target. The police investigation revealed that the intended target also lived in the same neighborhood, but the police did not disclose his identity. Barnaby was found dead outside an apartment building on December 30th, 2011. On July 16th, 2012, on Danzig Street, just a few blocks from the apartment building where Barnaby was killed, there was a party to celebrate the July 16th Street Festival. This area was a stronghold of the Galloway Boys, but this stronghold would soon become one of the biggest crime scenes in Toronto's history and paint a police target on the back of the entire Galloway Boys gang. The party started smoothly, just like you would expect any party to go. However, witnesses at the scene reported suddenly hearing gunshots that caused people to panic. That party quickly turned into a bloodbath and bullets flew everywhere. Over 23 people were injured and two were killed, 14-year-old Cheyenne Charles and 23-year-old Joshua Yase. Both of them were innocent bystanders who were just there to enjoy the festival. The 23 others who got wounded ranged from a 22-month-old baby to a 33-year-old man. All 23 who got wounded were quickly shifted to a nearby hospital. None of the witnesses knew why there was suddenly a shootout at the party, until much later when the police concluded their investigation. The police investigation found several different clues and made revelations that the reason for the shootout was a turf battle between the Malvern crew and the Galloway boys. Detective Sergeant Trimble of the Toronto Police Department said that before the party, one of the members of the Galloway boys posted the time and the location of the party online in a tweet, where he claimed that he was giving out Hennessy cognac for free. This tweet drew people to the party from different regions of Toronto, including the Malvern area where Charlton was killed. This area was under the control of the Malvern crew. When people from the Malvern crew got to the party, the Galloway boys confronted them and told them to leave, to which the Malvern crew obliged. But they later returned with even more people, and that's when a flurry of bullets erupted at the bystanders. There were hundreds of people there that night, and the police believe there were five to six shooters. The police also managed to apprehend two suspects. Nahom and Shaquan were charged in connection with the Danzig Street shootout. Nahom was charged with reckless discharge of a firearm, and Shaquan was charged with gun-related charges and uttering threats. Nahom was a member of the Galloway Boys and went by the street name Gifted. However, police later claimed that they didn't believe Shaquan was present at the street party during the time of the shootout. The police recovered 25 shells and 5 firearms from the scene of the shooting. Between 2011 and 2012, the police linked 3 different homicides and 6 shootings to the Galloway boys. Police believe that these shootings were the result of altercations between the Galloway boys and the Orton Park gang. In their bid to stop the violence, the Toronto Police Department launched Operation Brazen. It concluded in September 2012, and as a result of this operation, 54 charges were made against 9 individuals and 5 firearms were seized. The police launched the operation in connection with several murders and shootings. The first of these shootings was at a Domino's. Three men between the ages of 18 to 20 were shot at a Domino's Pizza on 3859 Lawrence Avenue in September 2011. The next homicide came in November 2011 when another 25-year-old man was shot at Firth Crescent and Northfield Road. The violence escalated even further when a teen was shot on Chesterly Boulevard in September 2012. To top it off, a teen again got involved in the violence, but this time on the opposing end of the gun. They attempted to shoot a police officer by pointing the gun at them and pulling the trigger. Fortunately, the firearm failed to discharge and the officer didn't get hurt. This incident took place in September 2012. Although Operation Brazen was already a success, the events dating from September 2011 to September 2012 clearly showed that Toronto was nowhere near free from the wave of crime that had gripped it. Therefore, to further deter the rising rate of crime in Toronto, following the success of Operation Brazen, the police launched Operation Quell in June 2013. Operation Quell was another huge success on the part of the police force. It resulted in the arrests of seven members of the Orton Park Gang. They were charged with 138 offenses, which included drug trafficking, being a member of a criminal organization, and firearm-related offenses. Years later in 2017, Jason Wisdom was released from jail. Throughout the 13 years in custody, Wisdom maintained that he was an innocent man. During the trial, neither Riley nor Atkins testified, but Wisdom did. 
He claimed that he was only involved in the drug trade, arguing that he only did that because after graduating from high school, he preferred the more lucrative drug business over working at a restaurant. Wisdom admitted that these were the bad decisions he made as a young man, and he's now learned a lot from them. During his days in the Galloway Boys, Jason was part of a plan to steal $100,000 from a money mart. The heist was an inside job, and the cashier agreed to get shot in the foot or have a gun put to her head in order to make the ordeal look authentic. However, the police were monitoring the telephone calls and communications of the Galloway Boys, and their plan was foiled. Jason's participation in this attempted heist was presented as evidence of his bad character and him being an active member of the gang during the trial for the murder of Charlton. The court later ruled that this evidence did not clarify Wisdom's participation in the murder of Charlton and the attempted murder of Bell. As a result, Wisdom was released from prison and he claims that he is now a reformed man. He says that the 13 years he spent in prison have transformed him and maintains that he did not participate in the shootout. The police claim that while Operations Brazen and Quell managed to make a significant dent in the operations of the Galloway Boys and the Orton Park Gang, they are far from eradicating them. Following Project Quell, the police are on the lookout for 8 members of the Galloway Boys and are requesting people to come forward if they have any information on the suspects. So far, the Galloway Boys activities seem to have gone off the radar, but the police are still on their tails. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like this in the future. Also leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see next. Thanks for watching and have a good one.